I need to talk to you. We need help. We're being pushed to our limit by wars. And Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that is um, Don Boy. Ascribe uh, praises to our God. And the song is that to the, the, the God of uh, faithfulness. Okay. God is a God of faithfulness. And as, as the word says, a God of faithfulness without injustice good and upright is he god of faithfulness there's no injustice in god okay um basically without preempting the topic if we are going to deal with god we need to understand you know who he is and we need to kind of flow in the same kind of uh culture of faithfulness with him and kind of the uh, paradigm if you like with him i want to welcome you all we are watching directly or whenever you come upon or uh, come across this uh, broadcast i welcome you in the name of jesus god be with you and yours as you watch and as you share by the way very important so um i want to introduce this topic again before i do that i'm reverend cyril okere and what we're looking at here is um where we are we are on board the sentinel yeah it's the sentinel which is the media arm of city gate ministries international and 
today or tonight we are looking at a, a topic which is um, cultivating a covenant mindset cultivating a covenant mindset we need to cultivate a mindset of covenant but before we do that the question is what what is covenant and I have a definition here uh, the definition I have it's uh, of course from, from the web uh, where this let me just get <laughs> it, it is it, it says it's biblical truths biblical uh, study tools okay that's what I see here okay uh, it says a covenant is a binding agreement between two or more parties who agree on promises, stipulations, privileges, and responsibilities. So that the term covenant is of Latin origin, meaning a coming together, and that is interesting. Oh, of course, of course, call, go or call, wherever. come in Latin is 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 with uh, venant, you know, venant, venir, very 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 dici. Okay, venir, you know, venir in French is to come. Um, yeah, venir also uh, uh, in Latin has to do with come, you know. So, like coming together, you know, co coming, you know, yeah. That's interesting. I never thought about it that way. It just occurred to me now. Uh, but in, in in the Hebrew word, uh, I mean the root the root word for covenant in Hebrew, which is the language of the Old Testament in the main. Covenant had to do with the root word had to do with cotton. Yeah, cotton. Okay. The the yes, it, it's the agreement, but that agreement is um, ratified by that you, you know so the people involved, the two people, as it says covenant is is an agreement between two people or more parties. And I would say a binding together. It's a binding binding agreement. That's interesting. It's a binding agreement uh, between two people, two or two or more parties. So it could be people, persons. It could be nations. It could be um, what, um, tribes. Okay. Peoples, but to initiate to do that in Hebrew culture, ancient Hebrew culture, the two persons or the two or the representative of the two parties have to come and they kind of make an incision, a cut, uh, in uh, maybe in the part of their body, maybe hand or palm, whatever, and they 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 kind of mingle it to, you know, to kind of. Uh, would bring the, the, those parts together and, and so that their blood will their blood will uh, mingle intermingle sort of okay mean that we 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 are coming together with, not just on, on 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 the periphery but something as central and as um, vital as blood our blood is kind of is exchanged with a change of blood that means our life are intertwined now to are twined up together. You get that? That's the way they do that. So that's and that's the root of that word covenant. But here we are we are, we are given a general definition of it. Now you go to um okay, it, 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 I continue with the where I continue with, let me drink water, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I have to lose my tongue. Right. It says, going back to where uh, the 
where, where I was reading from. It says, the term covenant is of Latin origin, meaning a coming together in religious and theological contexts. The term is used to describe the unilateral Unilateral, that's coming from one side, initiated from one direction, okay? Unilateral agreements initiated by God, right? So we're talking about biblical covenant here. It's initiated by God and confirmed by oath. The biblical covenants have different purposes and elements from the non-biblical ones, okay? Right, so we talk about biblical covenant here. Uh, the covenant, let me modify that a bit. The, the, the covenant between God and man. Example, God and Israel, God and Adam, God and there are different covenants, Noah and uh, uh, David and so on and so forth. They were in this, each one of these was initiated by God. All right. And of course, we see in the case of Abraham, God confirmed it with an oath. See that very, you know, you know Abraham and Hebrews is, you know, uh, refers to that again. And it says, um, In legal context, a covenant is a promise, an agreement, or contract between two parties. As part of the covenant, the two parties agree that certain activities will or will not be carried out. In general, a covenant is a solemn, oh, I like that word again, solemn. So we see the word binding agreement, and it's also solemn, not just casually entered into. Between two or more people or groups to do or not to do something specific. Okay. Now this definition I've just read out, or this um, explanation of covenant I read out, gives us a broad context to understand the topic as we pro as we proceed. Right. I said the title is cultivating covenant mindset. We need to cultivate covenant mindset cultivate develop it you know um have that mindset kind of train you to, to train ourselves to think and act in covenant terms very essential very 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 essential okay uh we're going to get into uh, the scriptures the first word I will read is in Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Um, I'm going to. Yeah, that's the first one I'm going to read. Um, let me just read that, okay? Jeremiah 9. Okay. The version I have here. I mean, I could get other versions. Okay, let me get it from K uh, K N K J V. N K J V. Here what it says. It says, "Thus says the Lord, and the Lord there is Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh." This is what God is saying now. What, what, what does God say here? It says, Let not the wise, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this that he understands and knows me that i am the lord exercising loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth 
For in these, in other words, in these things, in, no, in, I delight. In these I delight, says the Lord. Yahweh. Yeah. Hear that? What's he saying? God is telling you and I. God is telling anybody who cares to listen. He says, let not the wise, the intelligent, the you know, the, the great thinkers, you know, those clever people, let them not boast. So that would be what it means, boast. Let them not boast in their wisdom, in their intelligence. No, no, no. Don't, don't brag ab no, about how intelligent you are, how wise you are. Say, so let not the mighty man, the strong man, you know, who does exploit, the strong, rather physically strong in terms of um, your position, the mighty man, you know, the, 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 the political leaders, the great corporate Mongols, you know, I mean, business Mongols, you know, let the whatever, whatever, however you describe your strength, or whatever dimension that you are strong in, say, don't boast about that. That's not, it's, 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 that's not what you boast about. I, I, I include the, the beautiful, you are beautiful, you are, you, you are charisma, you are elegant, you are gorgeous, you are, you've got money, you've got class, you got, do not boast on those things. Okay. He said the rich man should, should, not, should not boast in the brag about their riches. He said, don't do that. Don't do that. See, the, the way it is, is this, like the way life is. If you consider yourself as wise, there are people wiser than you. There's a limit to that wisdom. There are situations that you cannot handle in, with all your wisdom. You, that, the situations that will face you, situations that will face you, if you, you, you that, that cause you to spin, spin off the path of, 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 of uh, personal discipline and dignity. There are some wise people that have made some dumb, some stupid, stupid decisions. And we don't want that. Well, really, I thought he, I thought he says he was wise. I mean, Solomon was one of such. Wise man, the Bible says he was the wisest. The wisest of humans that ever lived. And their world, you know, nobody could compare with him. But through his unwise decision I mean the nation of Israel split into two he created a problem for his uh, descendants and successors I used to feel was wise wise in counsel I mean when the the Bible says when he 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 gave counsel, it, 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 it likes a, like you've consulted at the oracle. Fantastic guy, but he made a wrong choice. He took the wrong path that led to failure and 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 eventually his suicide. He killed himself. Led to his demise. What about the <coughs> mighty people? We see human strength, you no, know, failing them. We see people who are mighty and great, and we see them crumble. I I, well, I saw something recently uh, on the Facebook. Uh, what was that person? Who is that person? One of these great um, power, you know, uh, power power. People, you know, strong men, 
that display enormous strength. Um, I forgot his name. And, and, and I saw him. I mean, very muscular guy. I'm very, you know, he used to, well, you know, those power um, uh, competitors and all that. I saw him. He could not even lift his limbs to climb. You know the stairs, a few stairs. People they were to help him. His strength, his might failed him. And besides, there are people who are stronger than you in any case. So, so, so. In fact, there are many who are stronger than you. So, no need boasting about that. He said, "Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. No matter how rich you are, there are people richer than you." And your money cannot buy everything you want. Not no everything that you they, you see, human your resources are limited. No matter how rich you are, Bill Gates used to be the richest man in the world. Now he's not. Other people took over, and there are other people. so it's it's and they, there are some rich people that have suddenly gone bank, bankrupt. Money failed. So your riches is not what you should. You should glory about. So, does it mean we should not boast on anything? No, it says, but let him who wants to boast. That is, to, God, that is, God wants us to boast about. Ah. Well, okay, what is it, Lord? I can't wait to hear. Say, so let him who boasts, we want to boast, we want to glory, we want to brag. Okay? You want to do what uh, Nigerians we call Iyanga, you know. <laughs> you, you know, you want to do, you want to swag. Mm -hmm. Say, so let him who glories glory in this. In what, Lord, that he or she understands and knows me. God is saying to us. The only thing we should boast about that is legitimate and right is that we should boast that we understand him, that we know him. Do we know God? Do we understand him? Okay, that's, that's why we're talking about this. He says that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, Righteousness in earth. Oh my God! So God does not, not do all these things. You no, know? righteousness, loving kindness, faithfulness, as we hear in, in the morning song. Just judgment. That, you know, that that implies justice, fairness, righteousness. He says he does it where he exercises it where in earth, in the earth. Oh, I thought it was okay. God is in heaven, so whatever happens in heaven, you know, you know our business. Or, or whatever happens on earth does not concern him, as some, as some people believe. Yeah, his rule, his throne in heaven is established on righteousness and justice and, and, and all this real stuff. But he also exercises these things, these values, on earth, terra firma. That means if I'm walking in a manner, or behaving in a manner that is not uh, consistent with the values of loving kindness, compassion, judgment, righteousness, fairness, then I'm walking at proper purposes with God. I am walking counter God. I just want to say that that's just a part. That's not where I'm going. Say, so for in these things I delight. I love these things. God, God loves these things. So you want to know what God loves? Some people go and commit some serious crime and do commit acts of corruption and and then go and build a big church, you know, a big uh, worship center for God. They say for God. <clears throat> 
that God is happy, that God is impressed by your building. <laughs> Some people build mosques to please God. Some people build temples, wherever their religion, think that they are pleasing God. I'm talking about the Almighty God now. No, I'm not talking about man-made God and all that funny gods that people worship. The true God, the Holy One of Israel, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, you cannot impress him by that. Hmm. Okay, say so he delights in those things. Okay, so what to please God, those are the things you have to focus on. The Micah that says, that, um, I, just, I just say it again. Say, so I've, I've told you, oh man, what is good, you know, the things that God delights, you know, this is like work, work in righteousness and justice and all that. James says, true religion, true religion, <laughs> and undefiled, is this. And they talk about looking after the you know, orphans and widows and, uh, and, and, uh, and keeping what's this from the world. Okay, let me. So we see that scripture. That's it. Okay, fine. Let me just underline where I'm focusing on here. Let him who glories glory in this that he understands and knows me. Okay, yeah, that bit. The other one is just yeah, yeah, useful peripheries. But so God wants us to glory in the Father. We know Him. Okay, so how do we know Him then? See, that's important because uh, John chapter seventeen verse three, Jesus said that this is eternal life. Eternal life, life eternal, life everlasting. That they that we know him, that we know God and Jesus that He has sent. So that is eternal life. So that yeah, no wonder. Something that is worth bragging about. Okay, let's go to say so that we know him. Okay. How do I know God? Let me go to Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. It says, Therefore, know the Lord your God. See, that's the most important thing. See, that's what we, we can boast in the fact that we know Him. Now, He's saying to you, the children of me say, Know the Lord your God. Know him. Okay. Who is he then? He say, He is God. Yes, he is. The faithful God. This God is faithful. Who is the faithful God who keeps covenant? You see that? And mercy for a thousand generations. With love and uh, with those who love him and keep his government. So, oh, okay, be giving some kind of insight into who this God is. This God that I'm, I'm, I'm commanded and, and, and advised to know, whose knowledge is what bragging about, is telling me that he is God. He's introduced himself, that he is God. The faithful God. This God is faithful. Who keeps covenant? That is God. He is. He is. He keeps covenant. That's one of his key characteristics. He keeps covenant. He respects covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. He extend his covenant faithfulness. Up to a thousand generations. Whoa! With those who love him, those who love him, and keep his commandments. So, if if you, if you love him and, and, and you get into that covenant relationship, with, you know, uh, with him, God says he's, he commits to it for a thousand generations. On and on and on and on he goes. So we, we, even when you are not here and you go way, way back, 
the generations, a thousand generations following you will reap of that covenant. That the, the, from, reap from the blessings of that covenant. Hallelujah. You see that? Okay. Okay. So that's what the world wants to know him and to know him that and he just introduced himself. The kind, so we know we need to have in our mind like, this kind of God that we're dealing with. God who shows mercy, not the God that 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 asks you to kill on his behalf. God who is very faithful. Okay. Now that is a mean that if you are following if you are following a God that that is that does not that's only one God that gives no that's like that's no, fulfills this this criteria. If you're following any other God, that you're slaving away, killing yourself and, be, and, and killing others for, a God of wood and stone and that cannot even carry themselves and help themselves, let alone you. A God of your own construct, mental construct. A God that your money creates for you. Know it now that you are back in the wrong tree. You are worshipping the wrong God. And the Bible says those who worship idols shall end up like their own idols. Dumb, blind, and on their way to perdition. So this is true God. So, yeah, any God that doesn't fit this bill, then then needs to be Dump on the rubbish bin and, and, and I'm burnt. Okay, we see that. Know that. Importance of knowing these gods, knowing who we are serving. Do you know? Do you know who you serve? So Jesus told the Samaritan woman in John chapter four, "Say you worship what you do not know." That's sad. You worship, you labor, you pray to, you praise, you sacrifice, you know, different things. You you build uh, worship centers, shrines, for something or someone you have no clue, you don't know. God does not want us worshiping like that. You worship in, you know, in, in blindness. That, that's why when Paul went to Athens and saw those, the, the people with the different, you see these people are so religious, so superstitious, so into spirituality. This day we talk about spirituality. We are, we are spiritually, you know, spirit, spirit, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual. When you begin to see what kind of spirit is behind that spirituality, it's like some, some some it's a vague, vague notion. Not even, not even the, I would say entity. They, they don't insist. They are just figment of people's imagination. Mm. And so your spiritual, your spirituality anchored on what? On nothingness, on, on, on vagueness, on nebula. <laughs> So you worship people you don't know. So Paul went to those people and saw the rooms. Hmm. So they, they are different shrines. I said, and then someone that says, you know, to the unknown God, or to the unknown God. I said that they, they, somehow they had the sense to know that that's actually as part of all this was all this, you know, a pantheon of, of of pretend gods and all the pretend deities. There is one actually that yeah, we see his works, we see his um, uh, autograph on you know, creation. We see, you no, know, there's yeah, there is something about this world, this environment we we find ourselves in that shows that there is a, a big God, a great God somewhere behind all this. But we don't know him, no. we don't know him. So they just made a, 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 a temple to say to the unknown God. So it was Paul's privilege, blessed privilege, to go and explain this, who this unknown God. Was so that they could believe in him. You worship what you do not know. Said eternal 
life is knowing God and Jesus Christ, who He has sent. God wants us, and, and if I does invite us to know Him. He wants us to know Him. Was it uh, Moses? That Moses prayed that God should show him His glory. Paul prayed that, that I may know You, in Philippians chapter three, that I might know You. The, know the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection. That is a difference, you know. The, the, the different dynamics. You're operating on different in different dynamics. When you know the, the one, you say you're serving. So in these two verses, we we see we 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 we, we begin to understand goals of who God is, His character, His attitudes, things He put weight on. And one of the key words that is there in those two, uh, particularly in that chapter, uh, the Deuteronomy 7, is covenant. Covenant, very important. See, uh, I'm, in, and this kind of covenant studies, this was something I go, I, I return to from time to time because I, I, that I, I, I kind of, it's what I'm passionate about. So it's not my intention to dive into uh, exploring the, the different covenants. They, they just know to have, have a given the definition, and that definition, uh, that definition is good. Is good for us. Let me see if I have people here uh, saying hello to me. I'm contributing to this. Okay. All right. All right. That's fine, that's fine. Whenever you come across this, please feel free to share it. You know, that's what they live in this here. In Jeremiah 7 9, it says, Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods you have not known? And then come and stand before me in this house. Which bears my name and say we are safe, safe to do all these detestable, detestable things. It doesn't work that way. In other words, you can't, we can't just do and do whatever we like and say we are worshiping God. No, it does not work that way. We have to follow in the same way, in the same attitude. This, uh, Paul says, "Let this mind in Philippians chapter two, let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus." This attitude. So if God is a covenant loving God, covenant keeping God, it behooves us to also be like minded. Now, my intention here is that to I want to kind of um, hold this issue of covenant up. For us to understand that it is a, a prism or a lens through, through which we understand God in his multifaceted attributes, attitudes, and how he responds to situations and to us as well. Covenant is a very important theme in the Bible. In fact, the Bible is a book of covenant to the extent that we we have New Testament. The whole Bible is divided into New Testament. An Old Testament, which means New Covenant and Old Covenant. The great characters of the Bible that we read about, they are all covenant conscious people, both in their interaction, interface with God, and their dealings with fellow humans. How do we know that we are in right alignment with God? We are in confident relationship with God. It is it shows or manifests in how we relate to others. John puts it this way in one of his epistles. He says, "Is it John that said it? Yeah. How, yeah, John. How can you say you love God and and you?" You you 
you hate the people that you don't love the people that you see your brother that you can see yeah you don't like the one that the brother you know you can see the sister you can see you, see, you don't like them and basically claim you, you love god who you don't see so the evidence of ungodliness must of necessity manifest be translated into our dealings with our fellow human beings if God keeps covenant, we cannot be covenant breakers and think that we are in relationship with Him. Okay? So those great characters we see in the Bible, they have no the positive ones, no good ones. They are all covenant minded people. Um we're talking about Isaac, Abraham, okay, Noah, even Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, the prophets, the priests, some of the good kings, and the bad ones uh, on their own. So, therefore, that covenant becomes an umbrella concept, a paradigm within which we can understand God and God's word and God's laws and things like, for example, things like law, you know, like God's laws, love, mercy, faithfulness, or you not know, being faithful, um, sacrifice oath yeah oath vow promise and other such words in the bible they are not separate categories you know in themselves just just hanging in the air they are facets and aspects of covenant yeah covenant for example covenant you know um god's covenant um i like god keeping his covenant to people so he showed you know he, he showed love and 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 um, uh, his law his laws for example the the, the uh, ten commandments and all, and all the commandments they are not just a set of rules, do's and don'ts, hanging, you know, in the, just hanging somewhere, or connected to anything else. They are part of the covenant. The covenant in Exodus twenty, the the, the Ten Commandments were given to the people that God has ad adopted as His own. And, you know, in a nation called us from Egypt, and you know, as God says, these are my people. But it says Israel is my firstborn. He brought them out of Egypt and gave them his laws, his covenant laws, terms of his terms of covenant. That's what those laws are. Within which I mean, I mean which if they keep if they respect those things, they, 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 then they have the environment to bless them and inter interact with them, you know, you know goodness and, and faithfulness and fruitfulness. His mercy again, not so. It's not like okay, emotional or oh, sorry, you know. No, his, his mercy. In fact, the word he said is loving kindness, loyal love. He does it. It's, it's, it's loyal. It's a committed, you know, love. He obligates himself to doing them good, and it's an aspect of that covenant. It's a function of that covenant. He's faithful to his covenant. So God is faithfulness, yes, to his covenant, to his promises, to his oath, his covenant oath. Even sacrifice. In the Bible, when you sacrifice to God, again, is in line with that. 
covenant. Let me read this scripture from here. Let me read one scripture here. It's in the book of Psalms. Let me get the right one here. Yeah. Psalm 50 verse 5. I will read it in New King James Version and then I will read it in Passion. Say, gather my sins, <clears throat> my sins, my separated ones, gather them. Gather, say, gather my sins together to me. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. See that? They made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So sacrifice has a context, and the context is covenant. The Passion Version says, Gather all my devoted lovers. Oh, may we be God's devoted lovers. Oh, God. Gather my devoted lovers, my godly ones whose hearts are one with me. Those who have entered into my holy covenant by sacrifices upon the altar. You hear that? They enter that covenant by sacrifice. This what brought us into a relationship with God, covenant relationship with God, as we to so many believers, is the sacrifice of all sacrifices. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. That is what brought us, gave us access to God, to be members of his family. To enjoy his presence 24 7 is by sacrifice. Hmm. Okay. Praise God. Um. Let me see again. Are there people here? Okolaiga, good evening. Good evening. Welcome all. All right. So, that's just, it's important for us to understand that so that we can relate to God, we can align our mindset and attitudes to God. The Bible says two cannot work together unless they are in agreement. So if God is a God who understands covenant, operates in covenant, respects covenant, and we are not, then then we cannot flow with him. We can't flow with him. What about I mentioned love, mercy, faithfulness, law even that these are not categories, in the independent categories themselves. They are just part of the covenant. We understand them better in the light of covenant uh, relationship with God. What about oath? When people in the Old Testament, when they swear, they say, as the Lord lives. Oh, according to, according to King James, as the Lord liveth. If, I will do this, or if I no. God Himself, we are told in Hebrews six, that He swore an oath to Abraham to confirm His promise to Abraham, and and, and that oath did not just happen. They just say, oh, "No, let's say, say we do it when we are growing up. You touch you touch your index finger." On, uh, on the, on, the, on, the, on the ground and then do uh, this one. No. There was a, 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 an elaborate ritual by which he ratified that the, 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 the covenant that the, the, um, um, Abraham within which you know, he, 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 he can confirm the promises with an oath within that. So that covenant, elaborate covenant we, we, we see in, in Genesis, he 
within that, he declared, he reenacted the promises he made. And with an oath, God of covenant. Right. So, yeah, all those words. So, in fact, when you read the, the Bible and you read, come across some of those words, just again put on the, your your glasses, your spectacles, your lens of, you know, the covenant lens to do you understand them differently. I said the ten, the ten commandments are not just a set of rules, you know, just okay, go and do one, two, three. It's not, it's not like a, 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 a wish list or, you know, your shopping list, okay, that, 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 okay, I did that, I didn't do that, okay, five over ten, or six over four. No. It needs to be understood from the point of view of covenant. Very important, very crucial. What God does for us as his people, how he deals and relates with us, they are all within the context of his covenant relationship with us. For example, his provision. Why will he give us food tomorrow? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> okay, he created us, and so he, he, he takes responsibility. That is true. That is true. But it's more than that. You know, he, he doesn't feed us like pets. <laughs> you, have, you have a dog or a cat, you have to want the dog, you know, you know, feed the dog, buy a cat food and all that. No, no, more than that. Psalm 115 verse 5 says he has given food to those who fear him. Yeah, he gives provision, he provides for his creation. He, he does that. But the, for those who fear him, since he has given food for those who fear him, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. So his provision to you, give us this day our daily bread, is directed to our Father who has the heaven. There's a connection, a relationship. Yeah? That relationship is is the function. He's giving us food, you know, loading us with benefits every day, you know, feeding us with good things like someone author says. It's, it should be understood in that in the context of that covenant you know, of his covenant keeping nature, covenant keeping character. He doesn't just toss crumbs, you know, bread, you no, know, uh, uh, cheese. Uh, you know, grains at us, like the people we see maybe uh, uh, at uh, uh, ponds, maybe in the park, you know, tossing breadcrumbs at ducks in the pond. No. Mm -mm. Or feeding pigeons, you know, throwing something from pigeons. He prepares a table before me, the psalmist says, in the presence of my enemies. Okay, I'll finish with this very quickly. Continue next week. Gotcha. So we have some, like people like Joseph. You know what? I'll stop here. I'll stop here. Okay. So, um, I'm Reverend Cyril Dokeri, and you've been watching The Sentinel. Uh, we're dealing with developing a covenant mindset. Yeah? Oh, no. So, that the, the right title is Cultivating a Covenant Mindset. It's important that we cultivate, develop a covenant attitude, covenant mindset, covenant mentality, um, if we're going to work with God fruitfully. And, and to our, uh, our own, to our own benefit, so we've we'll been dealing with that. I will we'll start today. We're going to maybe conclude tomorrow. I'm sorry, next Sunday. This, 
Okay, uh, I'm Reverend Cyril Okere, and um, yeah, for more things we've done, if you want to find out the things we've done in the past and, and uh, uh, check out some of the titles and listen and watch them and benefit from them, you can find them on our YouTube channel, which is uh, City Gate TV. And uh, to understand us better, where we're coming from, where we're going, you know, about the ministry and what we're about, please you can visit our website, citygateministries.org.uk and also drop us a line on info or at info at citygateministries.org.uk So with that, I say may God bless and keep you, God cause his face to shine upon you. Okay, have a great week. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me leave you. Before then again, let me check in and see the comments before I leave. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, on Aika, God of Covenant is the only sure ground we can rely on. Is there anything else we can trust? Absolutely nothing else. Okay, you're right, Aika. Absolutely nothing else. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.